So I think about then, I decided to give up, since I would probably need some sleep to handle things as effectively as possible. So I laid down and tried to sleep. I think it was about 3 o'clock p.m. I didn't get to sleep until around 11 o'clock p.m. I would call that being up for a day and a half. I have decided not to share what finally worked to get to sleep. I seem to have slight amnesia about the early part of yesterday. I guess I must have woken up around 9 o'clock a.m. because I have a mental note somewhere in my head that I got about 10 hours of sleep. I woke up feeling groggy, achy, and much less than hopeful. I went down to the lobby to call Jennifer Gamble and my PO on the lobby phone. Neither of them were there, so I left a message on their voicemail. I then went to Whole Foods to turn in all the cans and bottles I had collected on Thursday because I was out of smokes and smoking tonight. Since I was on bus ticket and it was the first, I consulted the coin god to see whether to walk to Whole Foods or take the bus, and whether to walk or take the bus back to my tobacco shop, which, as I've told the general content beholder, is a block away from where I live. You know, I told the gentle content beholder of this uh, about the uh, consulting the coin god because I intended to tell about the next day that I tried it the reverse way. The first day I tried it with uh, two heads for walking. And the second day, I tried it with two heads for riding the bus. And both times, it ended up uh, being take the bus back, which was a waste of bus tickets both times. I think the coin gods were punishing me for uh, even asking such a ludicrous question. The coin gods selected walk there and take the bus back, which did not turn out to be an effective use of the tickets since I ended up staying home until like six or something. When I got there, there was someone ahead of me who seemed to have a lot of cans and bottles, but it didn't seem to take him too long, so I guess he must have had less than he appeared to. Well, it got to be too late last night. Well, it got to be too late the night before last, and I ended up spending yesterday in Beaverton from about 11 o'clock a.m. to about 8.15 p.m. was the time slot I was out of the estate. After relaxing, smoking, and playing some net hack, it was almost 10 o'clock p.m., time for bed. Today, I had to go turn in some cans to get some smoke, and I had to go to Trader Joe's, about which more later. So I am starting this up again today, Monday the 4th, Labor Day, at around 6. Let's see if we can finish this by 10 o'clock p.m. While I was waiting in line, Jennifer called me, even though I had told her I was out of call minutes. She didn't have much to say. She, like me, had just gotten the news the day previous. I asked her if she'd gotten the psych eval and when. I forgot to ask if it was good for our case. I think she answered that it had come about a week ago. She ended the conversation trying to cheer me up. Final line being, you're doing great which is not how I felt at all. After I turned in my bottles and cans, I bought my smokes and went home. And this is where I might have some lost time. I don't remember what time I got home, but I relaxed, smoked, and played some net hack in preparation for starting this journal entry because it was past time, and besides, I thought it might get me out of my deep funk. I sent a voice to text to MWR telling him of the events of the last couple of days and a follow-up text saying he'd better give the voice text to listen. 
he eventually called me, I think at about six. I was in the middle of writing this journal entry. I asked him if he was aware that my call minutes could end at any time. He said he was aware and then proceeded to try to cheer me up, saying not to make this molehill into a mountain and that I could just keep appealing on my SSI. The call was cut short when my minutes finally were up, but he did seem to have cheered me up successfully, at least somewhat. Very soon after the call, I think, I got to looking at what I'd be wearing next. Because my clothes were uncomfortably dirty, but I still had one day to go before I'd allow myself to shower and change clothes. Had to be Saturday. I noticed that my next shirt on the stack was the shirt with the whales on it that said Oregon Coast, which I intended to give Lisa as a first day present. That got me to thinking that Lisa had texted me that she'd be in town Friday, and damn it, wasn't that today? So I checked my text conversations with Lisa, and sure enough, Friday. So I texted Lisa basically, when and where should we meet? She soon enough replied she wasn't sure quite when and thought I should select where as long as it was in Beaverton, not Portland. So it was only by luck that I remembered Lisa's birthday, though to be fair, Lisa might have gotten to texting me sooner or later. By this time, I was feeling pretty good. After giving it some thought, I suggested we meet at Starbucks at the Freddy's between Beaverton Hills Dell Highway and TV Highway. Lisa texted back that she thought that was perfect. I texted that the better she could specify the time, the better. She texted about 7.30. She texted about 7.30, but that she might be a little earlier or later. So between getting home from turning in bottles and cans, remember, I estimate I must have woken up around 9 o'clock a.m. and pretty much immediately gone to turn them in, and receiving the call from MWR, even allowing for time spent relaxing, smoking, and playing netback, I don't know where all that time went, considering I think I only wrote about four pages. Maybe... Slowness due to my deep funk explains it. I don't know. I decided to encase Lisa's gift in a wireless over-ear headphones box I found a while back. After putting the box in my backpack, I decided I'd better take my bag of cans and bottles rather than try to fit all cans and bottles I found in the backpack, which turned out to be very much the right idea, as I ended up finding what I'm sure was more cans and bottles than I could fit in the backpack, even without the box. Soon enough, it was about time to go. I think I texted Lisa at about 7.09 p.m. that I was at Beaverton Transit Center and I was having a smoke when I texted her. I had intended to get all the cans between Beaverton Transit Center and the Freddy's Bucks, but when I got done with Beaverton Transit Center, I was about to have another smoke. On a lark, I decided I'd better check the time. It was 7.32 p.m. I was late, so I walked quite rapidly to the bus. I saw Lisa and Bob right before I got there, but as near as I could tell before they saw me. I went behind where they were seated outside the bus and said, not on my watch, you don't. They turned around quickly, apparently startled, which was the intended effect. The meeting was brief. We all took our pictures, I said some things I later thought might be hurtful. The one picture I took, I later found out featured Lisa apparently on the verge of tears. But when I asked her later,
later, she said the sun must have been in her eyes, that I hadn't said anything wrong. A karaoke mentor of Bob had happened to be there, and we were introduced and shook hands. I made the mistake of asking Lisa whether Bob liked living at the coast as much as she did. Bob answered, letting me know he was alive and well and very much able to answer that question for himself. This was a light reprimand I deserved. When Lisa and Bob left, I decided to stay behind and have some coffee and see if I could catch up on my email. I had $4 and some change, I think. I didn't get through all of my week's worth or so of email, but I made some comments on MWR's blog and my own that I think were brilliant. MWR texted me he liked them too. I left at about 10 o'clock p.m., I think, and got the trash cans I had missed to not be too late for my appointment. As I was having a smoke at Beaverton Transit Center, but not on the property, the blue line next to Gresham came, but I decided to finish my smoke. When I got done, the 54 was waiting, so I figured I'd take it back to town if another Max didn't come by first. And so I ended up taking the 54. Even as the bus was leaving the Beaverton Transit Center, I had to take a pee from the two largest sized coffees I'd drink in at Buck. At the Buck. I wanted to hold it at least until we got barely into town, if not to Broadway and Burnside, which was the closest the 54 got to the estate. I just barely was able to hold it to the edge of P-Town since the 54 seemed to be stopping at almost every stop and the vibration was excruciating. I got off and immediately took a pee in some very nearby bushes. What a relief. No bus came by while I was having a smoke that I noticed, so I walked home collecting cans and bottles the whole way. I think it was about 11.30 p.m. when I got off the 54. I must have walked fast because I was only 15 minutes late. I took my Zyprexa when I got to my room, and I think my last Trazodone. I'll have to pick some up tomorrow, but I couldn't sleep. I decided that since it was after midnight, it was Saturday, so I could take a shower and change clothes, which I did. But I don't think I fell asleep until about 4 o'clock a.m. I must have woken up at about 10 o'clock a.m. because I have a mental note somewhere that I got six hours of sleep. I think I spent the whole day working on this entry and don't think I have anything to report about Saturday. Sunday, I had to go out to Washington County, being out of smokes and cans. The coin god selected Beaverton Transit Center. I don't remember what time it was, but it was earlier than 2 o'clock p.m., which I know because as I was walking down Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, An electronic sign said it was a little before 2 o'clock p.m. and 95 degrees. I found a Freddy's cart right outside the Beaverton Transit Center and only replaced it once for a Freddy's cart with identification marks fully faded off, which I found on the edge of Freddy's property. On my way to the central bottle return place, a man saw me digging in the trash and said he'd buy me any food at the stand we were at if I'd throw away some KFC food I found in the trash. End of part three.